it can be difficult for organizations to be able to secure the computers that their employees are using. In particular, being able to make a one-size-fits-all security policy for all the things that people might be engaged in is a really challenging thing to, thing to do. Hi, I'm Craig Shu. I'm a professor and the head of the computer science department at WPI. I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about some of the research that we have in being able to isolate activities on an endpoint device. So when I think about the things that I do at work, I have a whole bunch of different functions that I'm engaged in. So I might be emailing with people, I might be engaging with students that I've, I've never met before, um, applicants that are applying to the university. I might be engaged in web browsing, trying to find out new information. Um, during my lunch break, I might be uh, browsing cat videos on the internet. Um, and so when I think about uh, the other things that I do that are at WPI, they may work with sensitive assets. So when I'm engaged in research, that is information that may not be public yet. Uh, when I think about the budgeting functions that I'm doing, it may contain salary and payroll information. So the different kinds of functions that I perform on a computer are all kind of commingled together. I had different goals for my, for my assets, but IT is in the position where they have to be able to write one policy that is able to match everything that I'm doing on a computer. And that common policy tends to be of the, the variety where you say, let's lock things down, let's make this as secure as possible, and constrain what can run on a device. Unfortunately, that can also introduce problems. So when I think about my, my role as a computer scientist where I am creating software, it can be very difficult to run that software in my own computing environment to test it if that environment is set up so that any unknown executables, things that were not already listed by IT explicitly saying that this is an allowed thing, those wouldn't be allowed because the policy would prohibit it. Uh, even worse, when we think about things like high-risk activities. So if I am doing something that I know I'm not so sure about the security goals here, um, if I'm opening a new program for the first time and I'm not exactly sure what it's doing, this high-risk activity is still merged with all the other things that I'm doing on a computer. And so if there is some malicious behavior in that, that uh, program, for example, it can affect my budgeting. It could affect the, the things that are in my email. Uh, it might be able to leak my research data. And we see this commonly in organizations through the rise of ransomware, where malware will go through and it will find all of the files that are on the computer and it will encrypt them so that you no longer have access to it and you have to pay a ransom in order to be able to access things. So this is a real life problem that people are dealing with. What we want to do is say, can we take an endpoint device and separate it out, basically putting these little fences between each of the things that we do, so that if I engage in a high risk activity and it's malicious, well, that's not a problem because it can't affect my research data or it can't affect my, my budgeting information. And so these different zones of security can also have varying degrees of policy. So for my finances, we might lock that down so I can only use financial applications in order to work with that data. But when we think about me creating programs or developing, I can have an entire space that has policy that is much more flexible, allowing me to be able to build and do what I want. And so this allows us to be able to say, instead of sacrificing productivity and performance for security, we are going to allow you to make those individual decisions based on each of these different security goals. And so the benefit of this is that we can now write policy that matches our security goals. We can go through and say, this act activity group, we're going to have policy that reflects what it's trying to accomplish. And so that's going to benefit the end user and it benefits IT because now when they think about those higher security zones, they can write policy that is extremely restrictive without their end users getting mad at them. Because, yeah, I'm not going to care that you only let me use three different programs in this environment because that's all I need to accomplish that goal. Now, with this, there are going to be costs associated with it. We are going to be talking about running more environments for each of our endpoints. So before, you could run one operating system. You could incur the overheads of loading all of that into memory just once. Now we would be going through and saying each of these environments is going to have its own operating system and its own costs associated with it. There may also be concerns when it comes to usability perspective. 
So how can I make sure that I'm using the right environment with the assets that I'm working with? And so we're showing here as an example that you might have little clusters of activities. We might say the things that are in the, the blue fence are going to be associated with one kind of thing, maybe as a, an instructor role, and things with the, the green side are going to be more related to research. And so maybe we can make the computer automatically detect what security zones are supposed to be used for each thing that you're doing and try to make that usability challenge go away. So when we think about the competition of this work, the, the easiest one to think about is just doing nothing, maintaining the status quo. Well, that doesn't work so well. We know that ransomware is infecting machines. We know that assets are being compromised. Uh, we know information is being leaked. So that's not so great. The productivity costs are also there. And, you know, we always could go through and use regular virtual machine tools. There are commercially available off-the-shelf virtual machine tools that people could start up a new VM and say, okay, I'm going to use this for my email and I'm going to start a different one and I'm going to use it for my spreadsheet work. Um, it's possible. It's also really complicated when we think about what end users are trying to accomplish. And they're not really designed for this idea of having different security zones for the things that you're doing. So the management of all of that is going to be complex as well. The Cube's operating system tries to actually incorporate this as a fundamental principle in the operating system. So it really is designed for you to be able to have these different domains of security where you can specify this is going to be for, for personal activity, this is going to be budgeting data, and, and work from there. The trouble with it is that it requires significant expertise to work with. Getting Cubes installed is hard. Uh, it's not something that we're going to be seeing regular people doing. It's also designed to be kind of a, a single user environment. It's not designed for organizations. It's designed for me, a computing enthusiast, to go in and say, let me set up the environment a particular way. But it's not really gonna be able to take advantage of the IT staff in an organization that could go through and say, here, let me set up your zones for you. Here, let me use tools that will help automatically classify your data and put them in the right spot. It, it doesn't have that kind of functionality. So we, we do need something further in that space. We also want to be able to address some of the limitations it has when it comes to, to performance and hardware by being able to leverage server infrastructure at an organization so that not everything has to run on my laptop, for example. So that's a quick look at some of the research that we are doing to be able to separate out the policy goals at an organization into different environments. If this is something that is interesting to you, feel free to, to drop me a line. My email address is here on the screen. I'd be happy to talk to you.